Ever since the Grenfell tragedy, there's been a complete rethink in the way that we prevent the spread of fire and smoke through high-rise buildings. Now, one requirement is for non-combustible cavity trays. It's no longer acceptable to use plastic because plastic can produce toxic fumes when it burns. It can also produce smoke and those burning droplets of plastic can go down inside the cavity, thereby spreading the fire downwards as well as upwards. Now, the key fix solution to this problem is stainless steel. Now, stainless steel has an A1 classification and reaction to fire. It doesn't get any better than that. And here at the Keyfix Training Center, we're going to take you through the installation of the Keyfix non-combustible cavity tray system. Like all products manufactured by the Keystone Group, they've got real innovation at their core. The main idea is to make installation as simple and flexible as possible. Now it's worth pointing out that stainless steel's A1 classification is the best that can be achieved. The minimum allowable classification is actually A2, but Keyfix don't want to produce any product to the minimum classification. Now every bricklayer knows that the function of a cavity tray is to deflect any moisture that's penetrated the outer skin through windblown rain and is running down the inner side of the outer skin. And it deflects that moisture to the outside through a series of weep vents. Now cavity trays are typically used in areas where that moisture might transfer from the outer to the inner skin. And typically that could be something like over a fire stop, a masonry support system, or even a ventilation duct. Now in order to be effective, the cavity tray shouldn't be any more than three brick courses above the thing it's protecting. So in this case, it's absolutely perfect. It's right by the fire stop, but you could have it over a soldier course. But just remember the closer the cavity tray is to the item it's protecting, the better. Now, in order for a cavity tray to comply with building regulations, it has to achieve certain dimensions. The two important measurements, if you like, are it has to be at least 140 millimeters high, and also that sloping section has to be at least 100 millimeters. And this is just to stop those mortar droppings from building up behind the tray and blocking the drainage. So the other important requirement is that we've got to stop the water from traveling horizontally along the cavity tray. The way this is done is it's got integral stop ends here, which will prevent the water from spilling over the end down inside a window reveal or over the edge of a lintel. So what I said about Keyfix being innovative and trying to design out any problems, they've actually formed is as an integral part of the cavity tray rather than something you have to stick on afterwards. Now if you're thinking that this is just one more headache for the bricklayer, Keyfix have thought about that. They've made the sequence as simple as possible by providing a drawing and numbered components so that all the bricklayer's got to do is work around the building, starting from left, working around right, anti-clockwise if you like, following the drawing. And the really great thing is that every single component has got a label on it where it's numbered up and matches the drawing. So I'd just like to show you how the codes work on this Keyfix non-combustible cavity tray system because to my mind it's a really clever system and very very easy to follow. So we get our component schedule and our layout plan and from the codes on that we can identify the different components. For example, this is 2BT, which means a two brick tray. So two bricks long, one tray. So all the trays have stop ends at both ends. So they don't actually tell you that that's a stop end. So let's have a look at another one. Here we have a corner unit, the rib left RL 550 by 205 SR, which is stop right. So this here is a jointing piece. You can see how the jointing piece allows the adjacent trays to slip in and we can adjust it so that it coincides with the perp. So this is the bit I really like and you can see from here that we start from the left hand side our first component and that is coded blue which means it's a welded component and it's got the part ID on here and the correspondent part ID is actually on a label on the component so you really can't go wrong. <music> 
So here at the Keyfix Training Centre, we're going to take you through the complete installation of that non-combustible cavity tray system. And just about the only tool you're going to need to do it is one of these and possibly one of these and one of these if you want to cut some bricks. So the first thing to note is that Nicholas has laid a five mil, that's a half bed of mortar, all the way around here so that he can bed the trays on. So it's important that we have this half bed of mortar fully under there because it stops any capillary action, any moisture tracking back under the tray, but it also helps anchor the tray because we've got these indents and they set into the mortar bed and it stops it acting as a slip plane. Now, I've already mentioned that these indents provide a key for the tray, and some manufacturers do this by punching holes through the tray, but of course, holes can allow moisture to travel up and down, and around balconies and things, you can end up with rising damp. So this dry fit with no tapes or mastics is yet another example of designing out a problem, because where you use tapes, where you use mastics on a building site with moisture and dust, you can get failure. It's very difficult difficult to get good adhesion and I've been told that the number one reason why cavities have to be opened up again is simply because of a failure of a mastic or a tape joint. So another important feature is that these ribs here are there to stop any water tracking back through capillary action and you might think okay one channel one rib would be enough but this is an Irish company so to be sure to be sure to be sure to be sure. Now these trays are made to brick sizes and we know that bricks vary a little bit and sometimes the perps run out so they've got adjustability so that you can slide it up or down so you can keep the bond, you can actually line this up with the perp below. So the purpose of these split pins is just to hold the trays together at either end so that the bricklayer hasn't got to worry about losing his bond, about them sliding up and down while he's laying the bricks. What we've got is the capillary channels, we've got this clip which holds the front edge down, but it still allows that adjustment to be made. Those tiny little grooves at the end there allow any moisture that's in there to weep out. So that's like a secondary weep vent. So one very important installation point is that when you come to these upstands, the overlaps between the trays, you need to butter them up because what we want to do is slow down the passage of any moisture which might be running along there. It doesn't make it waterproof, it will still run under there and away, but it just means that it's not gonna flood through. Now, before Nicholas carries on with the next few courses, I just wanna talk about how this tray is attached to the inner skin. And the answer is it isn't. Because it's rigid, the non-combustible cavity tray is deemed to be self-supporting. And that's got a big advantage because we're not then tying the inner and the outer course together in a really rigid constraint, which could cause cracking. And also, there's no thermal bridging. And if there are any small obstructions on the inside here, such as projecting columns, we haven't got to be cutting around it because it will just sail past it. And that gap is actually an advantage. Now I've got to say, looking down the back here into the cavity, Nicholas is pretty clean actually. A really good thing to do, good practice, is to put a cavity batten down the back there, just so that you can catch that mortar and then you can lift it up. And the cleaner and clearer we can keep this back area on top of this tray, the more efficient it's going to be. So now the courses have been pointed up, it's time to remove these foam fingers. And you'll remember what we've got here is this overlapping system where we go across the grooves. And the bit that we want to remove are these foam fingers that are actually stopping any mortar from going in there. One of the advantages this has over a tape or a mastic joint is that 
we can test whether that's clear or not. Whereas with a tapered or mastic joint, the only way you can test it is really to pull it apart, which is kind of self-defeating. You find that it works, but it's too late, you've destroyed it. So what we can do here, this very clever little idea that they came up with, we just pull that out there, and then we just take a bit of banding strap, and we can feed the banding strap up through there. If it comes out the top, not only does that give the bricklayer a chance to test it, but it also gives the building inspector a chance to test it. Now for good practice, some of the warranty providers have asked for a piece of membrane to be laid in, a bit of breather membrane over the top of the tray. This is really just to deflect any moisture that's in the building while it's being built, you know, the rain might make the insulation wet. So while it's just drying out, it will deflect any moisture out. Normally, when the building's built, you should never get any moisture in the back anyway, but that's what they ask for, that's what you do. Before you put the membrane on, just bend over the stop ends here, just to make sure that it doesn't foul the membrane. So here's a way that you can actually check visually whether your weep vents are still clear. Now, another issue that's been thrown up by this thing of having to have a non-combustible cavity tray is that when we're using a galvanized lintel in a high-rise building, we would normally have put some plastic membrane damp-proof course on top of that galvanized lintel to protect it from corrosive elements in the sand and cement. But we can no longer do that because we're not using plastic. So the solution that Keyfix have come up with is to use a stainless steel non-combustible cavity tray lintel which is stainless steel, so it does the two jobs in one. You don't need this. You can lay the mortar directly onto the lintel, and of course it acts as a cavity tray again. Again, we've got the stop ends on it, integral. You don't have to stick those on. Because we're not wrapping plastic up the end, we need to stop that water from running over the lintel. So the whole thing is just as a standard lintel, and you'll notice that it doesn't feed into the inner skin if you like, but there's plenty of strength in that lintel, the way that it's constructed to do the job. A unique feature of the lintel is that it's slightly oversized and that's important because it allows you to toggle up and down so that you get those stop ends to coincide with the perp joint. So this bit is very, very important. When you're ordering these lintels, do it by the opening size. The specification is on the opening size, not the length of a lintel, because it's allowing for this toggling up and down and lining up the perp joint. So always remember, opening size, not length of lintel, and then you'll be all right. So let's have a look. 1360. 1360, happy days.